The gospel question for today is, how many trips do you take to carry your groceries from the car to your house? Today is the feast of St. Scholastica. Scholastica is the sister, in some traditions a twin sister, of St. Benedict, with whom she was very close. She's considered the foundress of the Benedictine nuns, which makes sense. The readings for her feast bring me back to my all-time favorite gal, Martha Bethany. Today's gospel is from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42, the story where Jesus comes to hang out at Martha's house and she's like fixing a pot roast in the kitchen while Mary is just sitting at Jesus' feet. Martha gets annoyed because she's doing all the work herself and she's like, dude, Jesus, tell her to help me. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There's need of only one thing. Mary has chosen a good part and it will not be taken from her. For many, many years, I hated this passage. And I suspect more than a few of the women listening to this might agree. How dare Jesus seemingly scold Martha for asking for some help? Why doesn't Jesus tell Mary to get off her butt and help her sister? Further, why doesn't the savior of the world himself head into the kitchen and chop a carrot or two? Let's look a little closer. In verse 41, we hear that Martha is worried, anxious. The Greek word used here is the derivative of the verb merizo, meaning to be drawn in different directions or cut into pieces. The verb always reminds me of that one point in the Fellowship of the Rings where Bilbo Baggins says, I feel thin, sort of stretched, like butter scraped over too much bread. This makes sense to me. These next words are mostly for my female identifying friends, not that they can't apply to you gents. Jesus' words, you are anxious and worried about many things, paint a picture of a woman who cannot seem to focus on something long enough to complete it. In our world, where the daily stress of being the perfect student, girlfriend, daughter, wife, mother, and career woman compete for equal share in nearly every woman's world, where the grace to ask for help, as Martha does, is often seen as a sign of weakness, even the kindest rebuke of Martha's activity feels ignorant on the part of Jesus. In at least some sense, Martha is the sister with whom the reader is not supposed to identify, but with whom many readers do. A few weeks ago, I dropped an entire bottle of red nail polish and it shattered all over my wood floors, just all over red nail polish like a crime scene and tiny glass shards surrounding my bare feet. I'll also say that I dropped the nail polish because I was carrying too many things, way too many. And I do this all the time on the way into work, on the way in from the grocery store, on the way upstairs to the table, from the table to the dishwasher, etc. I, I carry way more than I should. And most of the time I can balance everything and I make make it to my destination, usually only a short distance away without incident. But sometimes one thing falls and then everything else goes too. I make a giant mess. I break things. I end up in tears, swear profane oaths to the heaven far too loudly and spend way more time than I would have if I'd just taken one more trip or asked for help. Martha gets me and I get Martha. The way in which Martha's attention is drawn away by Mary's stillness renders her completely unable to do exactly what it is she's frustrated by in the first place, her tasks, her work. And I can see it now. Martha, she is going to drop the pot roast and she is going to be ticked. Here, in this sense, I hear Jesus' statement, there is need of only one thing as a reminder. Martha, Martha, why don't you just do what you're doing? Jen, Jen. Why don't you just do one thing at a time? One final note. When Jesus describes Mary's presence at his feet, he uses an action verb, to choose. Mary has chosen a good part. She has not ended up sitting at Jesus' feet out of laziness or happenstance, but as an act of deliberation. However, when talking to Martha, Jesus is, uses a form of the verb to be, a linking verb that does not describe action, but instead its subject. We understand the grammatical construction to describe how Martha is. Martha, Martha, you are anxious. This is how she is as a human. Jesus does not say that Mary is not prone to these same failings, but instead that she has actively decided to focus on one thing. In this instance, listening. Martha, 
Martha is challenged to consider her priorities and me, I am trying to remember that asking for help is a sign of maturity. Choosing to sit down and listen, even when there is a boatload of work to be done, is a thing of value. And to never, ever carry anything else when I'm carrying red nail polish.